As we have seen, a map is absolutely mandatory to the navigation. But how do we get a map? In some cases, we can just use a pre-existing map. However, there are different types of maps, and it's not always suitable for our application. Let's look at an example. I'm in Amsterdam, and I want to visit some friends. The first option I have is to take the subway. I found this map online. On this map, I can see different stations and how they are connected. On another website, I found this map. So which one do I use? Well, it doesn't really matter. They both contain the same information. The only thing I care about when I'm using the subway is the stations and the connection between them. How it's exactly drawn is none of my concern. This is called a topological representation. It's basically a graph. I start at the green station, and I want to go to the red one. The geometric scale does not need to be accurate. I could have also drawn it like this. Both representations are equally valid. Because we, didn't, we don't need to worry about scale and where each station exactly is, this representation is lightweight. It doesn't need much space to be stored. It's also useful for path planning. This representation seems very useful. But what if I'm not going to take the subway? I will drive myself. In such a, is such a representation enough? Well, no, because if I'm going to drive, I will need more details. In such a case, a metric representation will be more useful. This representation uses precise coordinates. For example, longitude and latitude coordinates are used to determine every place on Earth. Because this method needs to be so precise, it's pretty sensitive to noise. Now we have two representations for a map. A topological representation, which is basically a graph, and a metric representation, which is a detailed description of how the environment looks like. In a lot of robotic applications, we will not have a pre-existing map. In that case, we will need to make a map ourselves, using the robot, of course. The process of creating a map is called mapping. Let's look at an example. Right here, we have a mobile robot. I have chosen a different robot than the total bot to show you that the concepts are the same. We have Gazebo on the right-hand side and Arvis on the left. We will drive the robot around, and as we go, a map will be created of the environment. We see that as we move, the map is being built. This process is called simultaneous localization and mapping. That means the robot is building a map while keeping track of its own position. 